Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Clayton County Library System virtual program. Today we are um, conducting this program with the partnership of UGA Extension, and we have Miss Olivia Stevens, uh, Clayton County Master Gardeners, who will be presenting today's topics topic on bulbs. Miss Stevens, welcome. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Today, I will strive to give you a few tips to ensure a colorful and glorious spring and summer in your yard and garden. In Georgia, Sergio, we have a wide variety of bulbs that grow well here. Most of the bulbs are grown for their lovely flowers, thank you, and some for their beautiful foliage, such as caladiums and elephant ears. Bulbs can be grown in containers, in shrub borders, naturalistic plantings, in rock gardens, and in mass plantings. Bulbs offer a certain magic to the landscape, virtually unrivaled by other plants. So what is a bulb? A bulb is a modified plant part that develops underground for food storage to ensure the plant survival during adverse weather conditions. There are five types of bulbs. The true bulb, corms, tubers, tuberous roots, and rhizomes. A true bulb consists of a short, fleshy, usually vertical stem axis bearing at the top of a growing point or a flower bud enclosed by thick, fleshy scales. There are two types of true bulbs, the tunicate type, such as daffodils and tulips, and the non-tunicate type, such as lilies. The tunicate bulbs have a paper-like sheath, as you will see on hyacinths, tulips, flowering onion, daffodil, and iris. The imbricate bulbs do not have the papery sheath, and they consist of separate scales attached at the basal plate. Corms are, have a swollen base of a stem axis enclosed by dry, scale-like leaves. In contrast to a true bulb, a corm is a solid stem structure with distinct nodes and inner nodes. Examples of corms are gladiolus bulbs, for example. Tubers and tuberous roots. A tuber is a swollen underground stem modified for food storage with often nodes and buds along the surface. Tubers are similar to corms, except that tubers usually do not have the papery tunic. A tuberous root is an enlarged flesh, fleshy root modified as a storage organ with shoots produced at one end and roots produced at the other. The dahlia is a good example of a tuberous root. Rhizomes. A rhizome is a specialized stem structure in which the main stem of the plant grows horizontally or just below the soil surface. Rhizomes bear the same internal and external structure as true stems. An iris is an example of a rhizome. Where to plant my bulbs? Before you consider planting your bulbs, there are Two very important things that you need to do. Number one, have your soil tested. This can be done by taking a soil sample to your local extension office. They will send it to UGA and UGA will send you recommendations for amending your soil. In the absence of a soil test, you may add one to two pounds of 5-10-10 or 10-10-10 10, 10, 
or 888 fertilizer to 100 square feet of your flower bed. The second thing is to take the time to design your bulb placement. Check out on the package the height of your bulb at flowering and the time it blooms to make sure that your tall flowers don't hide the lower ones. Where to plant my bulbs? Bulbs are beautiful planted under the canopy of trees, in pots and containers, in grassy areas, and mass plantings. There are several ways to plant flower bulbs, and the most popular is to simply dig a shallow hole using a trowel. Another way to create a more to create a more natural effect is to gently scatter your flower bulbs over your desired planting area, letting them land in whatever holes they find. Planting bulbs. Plant spring flowering bulbs in the fall. In Georgia, spring flowering bulbs can be planted from October through late December. Summer flowering bulbs are planted in the spring after the danger of frost has passed. The planting depth is the distance from the bottom of the bulb to the soil surface. And spacing will vary from one to two inches to as much as several feet. Plant your bulbs upright. Press the soil firmly around them to remove any air pockets. Rhizomes and tuberous roots are usually planted on their sides. Then water your bed thoroughly to help settle the soil. The first thing, um, water and damage. The first year you plant your bulbs, you do not need to fertilize because there are enough nutrients enclosed in the storage system. The next year, when the foliage turns yellow and dies back, you may sprinkle some fertilizer over them. A good fertilizer to use is 10.55. Bone meal is no longer recommended because dogs may dig your garden looking for bones. Water and drainage. A simple test to make sure your soil is well drained is to dig a hole about 10 to 12 inches deep, fill it with water. The next day, fill it again and see how long it remains. If it drains in eight to 10 hours, it's okay to plant your bulbs. Bulbs store water and the rainwater is sufficient for your bulbs because most bulbs are drought tolerant. Make sure that your soil is well drained because bulbs can rot in damp soil. You may also use raised bed. Bulb maintenance. Select bulbs that are firm and unblemished. Purchase them from a reputable dealer. I've found very good bulbs at big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot, even Walmart and Aldi. I order some online. When your bulbs arrive, arrive, if you cannot plant them right away, store them in a dry area at about 60 to 65 degrees. To force bulbs, place the bulb in a pot indoors in a cool dark st storage area like a garage or a basement for about 12 weeks. After 12 weeks, the root system of the bulb has begun to form. Then you move, move it to a semi-dark warmer area for about four days. After that, move to light and warmth, and your bulbs should bloom in one to two weeks. Problems with bulbs. If you notice that you have no flowers, 
after you've done all of these other things, these are some of the problems that that you may notice. Your bulbs have been planted too deep, or your bulbs are immature, or the climate could be too cold or too hot. The bulbs could be overcrowded, or maybe they've been excessively fertilized, or the area where you've planted could be too damp and you've watered too much. Another reason is your soil could be too compact and it might need sand. Or you've inadequately stored your bulbs. And a very important reason is you have problems is because maybe the chipmunks have gone and eaten your bulbs or maybe voles. Now I will begin to mention a few bulbs that are very popular in Georgia gardens and when to plant them. The dahlia is a summer blooming bulb and it's very grown very beautifully in Georgia. Leave the bulb to die down. Remove the foliage only after it's dry and brown. Then lift the bulbs and store in a net bag in a cool, dry, airy place to avoid mildew. And dahlia should be divided every two to three years. Begonias are bulbs that bloom in the summer. They're summer bloomers. They should be planted after the fear of frost is over in February until early March. Begonias are very nice grown as a pot plant or as a bedding plant. And it should be planted about one inch deep in the spring. Gladiolus. The gladiolus is grown as a cut flower. The lower floor florets wither before the upper ones open. You plant your glads in early to late March and it will bloom between June and July. Staking is necessary because the, the glads grow tall and for staking I sometimes use just the those bamboo sticks to stake them. Dahlia is used as a cut flower. Plant from April to June. It blooms between September till October and it should be planted about six to eight inches deep. And dahlias love full sun. Crocus is spring flowering, so it should be planted in the fall in Georgia. And it should be planted about four inches deep. The hyacinth, very sweet smelling spring flowering species. In Georgia, it should be planted in the fall, planted about six inches deep. Bulbous iris and rhizomatous iris. In Georgia, it can be planted in late summer to the fall. The bulbous irises bloom early in spring and the rhizomatous irises bloom late spring to late summer. These should be planted about six inches deep. Caladium is grown for its beautiful foliage. It should be dug and stored over winter. Caladium is also a shade loving species and should be planted mid to late May. In Georgia, tulips can be planted in the fall. They bloom in the spring. You can grow tulips in beds or as a cut flower and should be planted about nine inches deep. In Georgia, a lily can be planted in the fall. Bloom times range from May to September. Excellent border plant and cut flower. 
and it should be planted about seven inches deep. The daffodil, in Georgia, the daffodil should be planted in late summer to the fall. The winter blossoms will become spring and summer joy when you plant a mass of colorful flowering bulbs in your landscape. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions um, in the chat box, but just for um, information purposes for those who may not know, are there any edible bulbs that can be planted this time of the year? And what are they? Onions and garlic are edible bulbs. And when should those be planted? Again, this is for in individuals who may not know. Uh, I think in the fall, yeah. right? Fall is the best time. Right now is a good time to plant um, your onions. And you can even plant some onions in, in the early spring. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. And I don't see any questions at all in the chat. So I am hoping that this um, information was very um, informative for those who are going to be viewing the recording. I want to thank you, Miss Olivia, for presenting with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Oliver. Have a great day. You as well. Thank you.